Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Pazinski. I'm from the VxRail product management team. I am here today to talk to you about VxRail dynamic nodes. So let's uh, let's get right into it. So first, I just wanted to cover a little bit about you know what our intention here is with the dynamic nodes. Um, Basically, we want to enable new use cases for VxRail and provide customers, you know, flexibility and an increased choice. While at the same time, we want to maintain uh, the VxRail management and ease of use that you saw in the earlier Tech Field Day sessions earlier today. And we want to expand our VxRail ecosystem integration. Uh, the last bullet point here, enhance the better together, is my own personal soapbox. It's a topic I'm, I'm passionate about, and I really truly believe uh, that we have the opportunity here to enhance the success of not only just VxRail, but the Dell Technologies portfolio as a whole. And you, you'll see why in a in a minute. You may have seen this slide already in the uh, VxRail Advantage sessions, so I won't go through each component. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of value to the VxRail system software. However, I do want to touch upon the ecosystem's connectors. The ecosystem connectors tightly integrate with infrastructure components, including vSAN, physical server components, and networking. For VxRail dynamic nodes, we are now extending that ecosystem connectors even further with storage options for more use cases and more flexibility for our customers. So let's get a little bit into more detail here on dynamic nodes. Kind of just a little history here on this previous, prior to this release, you know, we scaling of storage with VxRail was meant you had to buy more VxRail nodes. You really, you, you would scale your compute and storage at the same time. If really you only needed storage, there was no choice. Um, the storage specific features we're limited to what was in the vSAN feature set and or you know, vSphere and vMotion. We do allow fiber channel HPAs in our VxRail nodes. However, it's kind of, um, how should I say, it's, it, it's like, sure, you can do it, but we're not really gonna help you in any way, shape, or form. It's like, you can install them, you have to manually configure them, you have to do all the LCM capabilities yourself where there's no um, management functions within VxRail Manager. It's just like, it's kind of a, you know, a bolt-on kind of situation. Um, with those fiber channel HBAs, you could, you could attach external storage. It was primarily for a supplemental storage use case, whether it be for traditional VMs or uh, VCF in the workload domain. But, you know, frankly, you know, the primary intention historically has been to migrate data off of storage arrays onto um, vSAN-based storage. So what's changing? Uh, you may have seen all the different configuration options available for VxRail nodes. There's a slew of different options. The dynamic nodes will be focused on the E560F, the P570F, and the V570F. And you can have, you know, this processor options, the memory options, power supplies, you know, GPUs, networking interfaces. But what's changing here is we're elevating the role for the fiber channel HBAs to support primary storage, a primary storage role with these nodes. And those HBAs we offer are the, you know, 16 and 32 gig Amulex and QLogic HBAs. And the big change here, the most significant one is when you look at your storage drives, there are none. There are no internal cache or capacity drives in the dynamic nodes. The storage is coming from an external storage source and it's functioning as a primary storage for these dynamic nodes. So does this mean there's no vSAN when you choose that configuration? That's right. Yep. Okay. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and I'll go into more details on how it all works. So um, as mentioned briefly, you know, it's the, I, I won't go through all these slides. I'm going to actually crank right through these in the interest of time because I know you've probably seen these before, but, you know, we have multiple different platform options, but we have the E-series, the P-series, and the V-series. You know, the E-series is our low-profile, cost-effective 1U platform, you know, for core-to-edge deployments. We have the 570F, which is our performance-based server platform for heavy workloads and databases. And our V-series, which is our virtualization platform uh, geared towards, you know, 
2D or 3D visualization or VDI type applications. So what does this accomplish, you know, the dynamic nodes? It provides flexible storage options, so we've allowing customers to choose the storage type they want to use, whether it be, you know, vSAN, vSAN HCI mesh or external storage. You now can scale your storage asymmetrically with the dynamic nodes while still maintaining the VxRail system software in that operating environment. You get a compute node with a full VxRail experience. And as I mentioned, you have the different storage types. I was going to take a quick pause here. Um, I have a lot more content coming up. I don't know if there's any other questions, but I can dive right into the nuts and bolts and, and how this is going to work. So is it, does the dynamic node qualify as a vSAN ready node or, or I, I, I just trying to understand because I mean, you know, the purpose of VxRail purpose built solution for vSAN HCI. And now we're going out to primary storage again, which is, in my mind, not HCI. Yeah. Well, you know, um, can we come back to that? Because I have some slides sure. that actually address that question. And I know I actually knew that that was going to be one of the questions come up. But uh, I kind of want to make sure that uh, you kind of get a better understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it. And then we can come back to, to that question. Right. This is probably a related question, but I guess it's how does this how is this different than just host plus storage? So it's probably the same question, just asked a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. No, it's all kind of I get it. It's all kind of part of the same. We we can we can cover it. Let me just crank through a few more slides here, and then uh, I'll uh, we can come back to that topic. Sounds fine. Okay. So I mentioned the flexibility of choice, right? I mean with VxRail nodes, traditional nodes, you can do vSAN. With the dynamic nodes, you can do vSAN HCI mesh, or you can attach to a Dell and EMC storage array. Um, we have heard loud and clear from our customers that there are just some applications that require the storage-rich features that an external storage array provides. Um, they have VxRail, they love VxRail, but there's just VxRail is not part of that equation. Um, now we're bringing those two worlds together where they can use the storage rich features for those mission critical applications and use that VxRail operating model that they're used to. This allows customers to have a common operating model and to scale the compute and storage capacity as they see fit to match their application's needs. So we're doing this, you know, so that you can scale the storage independently or going with the PowerStore T the Power Max, the Unity XT via fiber channel attach. Uh, as I mentioned, there are some applications that customers have. They have to take a whole multitude of snaps. They really use the dedupe and compression. They want encryption. They want replication, whether it be local or remote, the cloud tiering. I mean, you saw all the, the storage feature sets yesterday in day one of the tech field day. So there's a, it's a, you know, Dell EMC has a huge heritage in, in selling storage and their customers that know and trust it and value it. The dynamic nodes will support external storage attached as primary storage, so no vSAN. Um, same in the VCF workload domain, no vSAN. We'll support all the Dell EMC, Connectrix, Cisco MDS, and Brocade fiber channel switches, both 16 and 32 gig. And we now will be providing management functionality for those fiber channel HPAs in the dynamic nodes. We'll be providing LCM capabilities for those HPAs. So now we have one common operating model. Whether dependent upon what you choose for your storage type, you have this common operating model. So it could be HCI mesh, so where you can share storage across vSAN clusters, or with our external storage array, PowerStore, PowerMax, and Unity XT. Um, you saw a bunch of PowerStore slides yesterday. I'm not going to go into these bullet points, but I really just kind of want to highlight the importance of what we're doing here. We're really bringing together two powerhouses, VxRail and PowerStore, to provide flexible storage options for customers' workloads with one common operating model. 
I'll take a pause here. I'm going to go a little deeper on HCI mesh, but um, and then we can I can stop after that if you like. Yeah, we all want to know what HCI mesh is. <laughs> okay, all right, let's do that. So is this like a compute node? Only now you're adding fiber channel storage to it. Uh, yes, that's true. Yep. Um, and I'll come back to your question. It's all all intertwined. So, okay. um, all right. So the HCI mesh is a basically sharing of vSAN based storage from one cluster to another. Uh, prior to our 70240 release, each cluster contained some level of vSAN resources. So you may have a cluster with excess vSAN storage capacity and you can share it over the network to another cluster that was maybe uh, short on capacity. With this new release, what we're providing is with the dynamic nodes is you can have a dynamic node with no vSAN storage and get your vSAN based storage from a remote cluster. Now that cluster is not remote in another data center, it's still within this in the same data center floor because there are some networking requirements, but basically you can share vSAN resources from cluster to cluster. And there are some uh, there are some subtle differences between the the two releases, the previous one and this new one, but the most obvious with the new one is the dynamic nodes, since there are no internal drives, there are no vSAN licenses. So that could be a huge potential savings for customers depending upon how they want to configure their environment and what they think they may need for compute power versus storage resources for cer certain applications. So I'm going to come, I'm, I'm coming back to this slide because it comes back to your original question of what we're doing here. And at the beginning, I mentioned to you the ecosystem connectors. With dynamic nodes, we're extending that ecosystem to include Dell EMC storage platforms, providing flexibility and choice for our customers to match the storage requirements to the applications while keeping a common management and operating model utilizing the VxRail system software and all the benefits it brings. And I really want to, I mean, this is part of my soapbox, I really want to harp on this consistent operating experience because um, it's not just a compute node, right? It is the VX rail that customers believe and trust and use day in and day out. That common operating model goes a long way to simplifying customers' daily operations, their rollout of new systems. I mean, it's the history of not doing that is you know, you've probably, if you've been in the industry long enough or where you work, you've probably been in situations where subsystem goes belly up on a Friday afternoon. You're staring at the screen and you're looking at it, you're going, oh, geez, I don't know. This is the one that Bob built three and a half years ago and he's not here anymore. I, I don't know what he did to get this thing running. I don't know what sort of tweaks or, you know, add-ins he put to keep this, make this thing stable and then, you know, two and a half days later, you're finally seeing the light of day on a Monday morning and you finally got the thing up and running with your fingers crossed, hoping it stays up and running. That's what happens when you have inconsistent operating models that allow for variances and variables and user error when configuring and managing systems. With this common operating model, you know, bringing it all together, you're improving a customer's ease of use and their daily administration of their compute platforms regardless of the storage type it's attached to. So, I'm going to so in this here. configuration, so, is it using VVOLs for the power store or is it, or is it using normal data stores or, or, or what? It's using VMFS over fiber channel. Um, you can use VVOLs. Uh, VVOLs would be added in addition to the VMFS over fiber channel. Um, but the cluster is formed with external storage using VMFS over fiber channel. Okay. So did I address your question or not quite? Not quite. Gosh, you know, the whole different <laughs> uh, set of questions here associated with this, but um, 
you know, the ease of operation and simplicity to some extent is, is due to the vSAN capabilities that, that come online. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all a fully integrated with VMware B it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, even simpler than VVOLs to a large extent. It's all SPVM related functionality. Given, you know, the power store is easy to use and easy to configure, it's still not as easy as vSAN. That's true. That's my impression. No, you're, you're probably right there, but there are some applications that customers will not run on vSAN, right? But, they but want... Then why buy VxRail? Why don't you just buy a, a Dell power, power store, power edge, you know, standard node. I mean, why use the vSAN ready node or vSAN? Why use VxRail when I can just buy the power edge? Well, like I said, there are customers that have, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of VxRail nodes. They are using that operating model. They are used to that operating model. It's familiar to them. They are, they use it day in and day out, and they want to extend that usability to re all their nodes, regardless of the storage type that the node is using. Yeah. On, if I could add... Um... Just one second to see if this can help an explanation. The the part going back to continuously validate state with if you just go with the standard power edge to, and build your build your own, you're essentially doing all that research, investigation, validation that you would have to do every time that there is an EXI release coming out, whether it's some type of security patch or fixes, bug fixes or whatnot. So by standardizing on VxRail as that uh, primary compete platform, or if you have HDI, HDI so, I mean, stacks. I mean, the other, the other side we'll of this question, well. the other side of this question is, will LCM and VLCM manage PowerStore functionality the same as it does VxRail functionality? I mean, drive it's, functionality, HBAs and that, that sort of stuff. I mean, it's all gotta be built into the, the VxRail manager, doesn't it? Um, it's one step at a time. We're, ah, this is this is step okay. one, right? We oh, got to start. You got to start somewhere. So this is where we're starting. You know, so yeah, we'd all like to, you know, fix everything at once, but it just, life doesn't work that way. So I think I've done enough damage. That's <laughs> okay. No, it's all good. All right. Well, we can move on. All right. I'm just going to kind of show you some of the day one operations when how you configure dynamic nodes and dynamic node clusters. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know your traditional vSAN cluster or your HCI mesh or external fiber channel storage. So you've probably you saw some of the deployment wizard screens in the earlier presentation. So here's where you begin. You can choose your standard, you know, vSphere cluster. Now the options we're providing is you can choose dynamic clusters. So the set of dynamic nodes must all be dynamic nodes, meaning you can't mix and match traditional vSAN and dynamic nodes in the same cluster. Uh, and here in the screen, you can see you can choose dynamic node and they're choosing vCN HCI mesh. Same option based, same screenshot here, they're choosing a fiber channel array. Uh, all those configuration options that you were showing earlier in some of the earlier presentations still apply, except some of the networking changes are different. Mainly, you're not entering vSAN networking information, but you know you're entering all your standard, you know your DNS, your vCenter, uh, management network, etc. And then you basically skip over the vSAN network parameters. It'll validate the configuration just like any other VxRail cluster build. Then it'll apply the configuration to the cluster and build the cluster for you. Uh, all these functions are still are also available in the API. So whether if you're a customer who prefers to manage things via API, you, all those options are available to you here as well. I'll talk a little bit about the day two options um, as far as uh, your administration of the VxRail nodes. We have uh, disk operations, HBA events, and the fiber channel HBA LCM. And, I'll go a little deeper on the LCM functionality here, and I know Daniel covered uh, some of the, a lot of the HPA, I mean, LCM functions earlier, but primarily what we're doing is we now are including the ability to LCM your fiber channel HPAs in the dynamic nodes. And the difference here is we're not forcing it in a large LCM bundle. We're giving the customer the choice to opt in to that LCM upgrade, mainly because of the differences in how storage networks may be administered in different customers. There may be a storage team, 
that dictates what the driver levels are and what is attached to the fiber channel switches. So we're giving the customers the flexibility to, you know, manage that as they see fit or as appropriate to fit into their um, operating model within the teams on the, in their data center. So when you talk about LCM for a fiber channel, what all does that include besides the drivers? Does it include um, the addressing and all of that kind of stuff? No, no, the firmware and drivers. So the, you know, okay. a lot of the, yeah, the you know, the fiber channel zoning, all that still would need to be performed outside of the VxRail manager interface, right? You would still use your normal switch tools to go do that. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, it's a journey. We're on step one, so. Uh, the disk operations, and this is kind of uh, basically effectively there are none because there are no drives. So basically those disk operations within VX Manager are grayed out. There is no ability to perform disk operations in a VX Rail node. For FC HPA events, we're now treating this like any other managed device in a VX Rail node. So the customer would get notification if the port is going went down or is coming back up. These alerts will then transfer into IDRAC events and also transfer into call home events and then also will be displayed in vCenter as well for the customer. So here's an ex example of an alert in vCenter. And then we have another example of uh, an alert in the VxRail Manager hardware view uh, with a link to a KB article on how to you know, rectify the situation or investigate it. So I'm back, I'm back to where we started, um, uh, you know, trying to explain, you know, the enabling new use cases, the flexibility, maintaining that common operating model and management for the customers, and really trying to enhance the better together experience for Dell Technologies products with uh, VxRail and PowerStore, PowerMax, and Unity XT. There was a lot of mention of Power Store in there, but I, yeah, I, what you mentioned at the end, Unity XT and Power Max, um, yes. are, are those coming or are those part of this early solution or? No, they're all part of the solution. Uh, let me uh, go back here. And it's and it's just fiber channel storage, not iSCSI or, or NFS or any of those other yes. capabilities that also are Bell primary storage protocols. That's correct. Today it's it's. This first release, it's going to be fiber channel only. Um, there are other protocols on the roadmap, but first release is fiber channel. So, apologize for the screen blasting here, but let me get no, back. No, go to, ahead. There we go. Yeah, it's PowerStore T, PowerMax, and Unity XT all via fiber channel attach. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 16 gig or 32 gig doesn't matter. It doesn't FBAs. matter. Yeah, obviously we prefer 32 gig, and it's all the same, you know, app, you know, SAN networking requirements that are, you know, well defined in the Dell EMC eLab support matrix. I mean, they've been doing that for years on defining requirements for firmware versions, and the same with the storage platforms. And we're not changing anything with regards to that. I mean, storage area network is a well established. Uh, technology, so we're not changing any of that. It's uh, used by the, the largest corporations in the world, so it, it's. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand all that. I mean, you know, one of the things that, that VxRail brings to the to the table is you know twenty thousand hours of testing and validation of the various uh, compatibility matrix or or that sort of thing, and, and now you open up the fiber channel world. <laughs> into that space. And, and you know, the, the advantage of, of VxRail and, and the guy from New Belgium said it, it's just simple to upgrade. I can just hit, click and, and click and run to, to a large extent. And SAN's yeah, no. not that way. <laughs> you know, SAN well, takes a lot of cured feeding. I mean, it's it's zoning, it's 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 switches, it's the, the world true. is different. But we have thousands of customers who use fiber channel SAN zoning and they have applications that they will continue to run on fiber channel zoning until some such time that some new technology takes over. So uh, they want the storage rich features that come with PowerMax and PowerStore. So that... I understand all that, Dan. The question is, can you continue to have the simplicity that's embedded in VxRail and the ease of operations and all the things that make VxRail so nice and so adaptable and so, you know, it's 18% 
year over year growth and all that six billion dollar revenue all that stuff is based on the ease of use I'm not it's disagreeing with you. Yeah, no, it's just, it's, okay. it's certain customers who, who have their requirements and we're trying to meet their requirements. So, um, yes, you're yeah, right. VX Rail has built its legacy off, uh, you know, the ease of use of the administration. about customers because uh, VCF probably is the most uh, use case for this kind of solution. You talk uh, about workload uh, domain and uh, VMware open to workload domain to use not only vSAN. And if I remember correctly, the limitation of Fiber Channel is just what VMware has just imposed for VCF at this point. It's correct. This is the reason why you, at this point, are just supporting Fiber Channel because this, the main use case of this uh, solution can be the building block for BCF for uh, workload domain when a customer chooses to have a workload domain without vSAN. Yes, that's true. I mean, in our, for our storage arrays, still fiber channel ports are by far the most do dominant port type shipped with our, with our storage arrays. So there is a huge install base of loyal customers out there using and trusting and will continue to use fiber channel. So is there a, yeah, I think that was an interesting question just asked, right? So is this because VCF you can now use fiber channel or do you guys have a specific, either a specific common use case from all of these customers still using fiber channel or is it one big humong one or two big humongous customers that are using fiber channel? that are pushing this use case? Uh, we have lots of big customers using fiber channel. Um, and, you know, VCF in the workload domain for is a strong reason as to why we're doing this. Um, and as I mentioned, the the storage arrays themselves, or they're still shipping mostly with fiber channel ports. So we're providing the ability for customers who also have VxRail. I mean, it's most customers, it's not an either or. Most customers have both VxRail and traditional storage platforms, but they like the VxRail operating model for their compute. And they want the ability to be able to have that common operating model for these other applications that effectively have been excluded from VxRail in the past. Yeah, and, and to hit on the earlier statement around the validation, nothing's changed there. I mean, our, our storage teams work just down the hall from our ACI team. So we have access to all the hardware, all the ex best expertise in the industry. Um, so all that validation will continue. And, and frankly, customers have told us that, you know, you heard it from New Belgium, that, that they feel spoiled, right? They can go, they can kick off an LCM today with, with VxRail and they can go out to lunch. They can, they don't have to have the weekend um, sleepover parties in the, in the data center to go to go to these updates. They want to extend that capability and that automation down to down to these uh, fire channel attached rates. Now, now, granted, they can't initially do the LCM on the fire channel array, but but abstracting that complexity and having to hunt down the different supported versions, all the fiber channel support, doing all that validation just on the compute node has been a huge ask from those that, that customer set. I totally get it because I can remember hearing those questions asked and not understanding why <laughs> you couldn't do it. So, like, I get it. That's kind of cool. Don, I have a question. Um, yeah. I don't know if this was implicit or not, but what about customers that have uh, third party um, third party storage arrays, fiber channel ones? Would, uh, would it be possible to connect them to dynamic nodes? Would you lose anything in terms of functionality? capabilities and so on in terms of management, of course, not in terms of accessing the, the storage itself. Uh, right now with our first release, we want to stick to uh, the Dell EMC arrays, but we will, uh, you know, see what the field requests are and, and monitor those and the RPQ. And then uh, I guess, I guess monitor how the demand is for that and then, you know, address it accordingly if we have to. So today, so, so so connecting connecting a third party array would work but wouldn't be supported that's that's the thing yes it's right it's really just part of what we want to have as a solution envelope going out the door thank you sure yeah power store and power max you know replication capabilities and 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 
all sorts of other functionality. How is that going to be embedded? I mean, has it become just normal storage policy-based management capabilities or? Yeah, no, we're not changing the way you administer your storage or your SAN or, or you know, if you want to use the plugins for vCenter for those storage devices, then uh, that's even, you know, more the merrier because now you have that one interface in vCenter to administer your storage as well. So uh, we're not changing any of those dynamics. Whereas before it was all through VxRail Manager, right? I mean... Well, for the vSAN-based storage, yeah. it's still within yeah. vCenter, but you could still use vCenter with the uh, with the plugins for from PowerStore and PowerMax to administer storage as well. Or if you wanted to go to the native, you know, element manager for PowerStore, PowerMax, or UnityXT, you could do that as well. Mm -hmm.